I want us to be able to be in a place where the the word tells us to um, our minds have to be renewed. Mm -hmm. So it is a learned behavior. It's easy to hold a grudge because that's more that that that's more common in this earth. Right. But it's not easy to be abused by someone and then release them. <laughs>
Our struggles are built for our greatness, our purpose, to allow us to know him more mm -hmm. and grow more into maturity. Now, that's easy to say it. Right. Okay? Right. But I'm just giving you a little <laughs> bit of what struggles are designed for. Yes, because I can definitely see, um, and we've all experienced it or, or seen our loved ones experience it, where when these situations happen, you know, sometimes we just downward spiral. Yes. And almost sometimes to a place where we don't know how to come back. Right. If we do come back. Right. You know, because whether bitterness sets in, you know, and, and we have those things, it starts with unforgiveness and then bitterness. Mm -hmm. And so, and then it's hard to come back from that. And, but I think a lot of times too, listening to you, it's our perception and how we perceive whatever the situation is. Correct. Because we have a choice to that when we come to a situation to go and downward spiral, uh -huh. whether it's woe is me or God, why me? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, why did you do it to me? Or why did you allow this to happen? Or we begin to seek God and right. really seek his face and say, okay, what is really going on? Right. And, and I think that's good that you just said we turn to God and we become angry with God, basically. Because we're like, God, why me? And why you allowed this to happen? And why did this happen to me? Right. And I, I, I know we probably dealt with that once before, but I want to just deal mm -hmm. with it again to say free will is in the land. So just like you have free will to do evil, those who do evil or things happen to our loved ones that was the resort result of something that hurts us, mm -hmm. they had free will. Mm. So it wasn't God's doing. It would be free will that produced the fruit. Right. The choices that released the consequences. Right. And you can be a victim of someone's evilness. Mm. But it's produced to push you to greatness. Yes, and I think that is key is because a lot of times we're not taught that, you know, our struggles are to produce our greatness. And so, um, and I like what you said about renewing our mind mm -hmm. because then that would change our mindset. Correct. You know, and just remembering those those little things, like there's no fa failure in God. All things right. work together for right. the good. Right, right. And really begin to stand on the, the word mm -hmm. um, as these things come up. Right. And recognizing that, okay, you're, I see what you're doing. I, or understand the fact that you're trying to build me mm -hmm. or get me to my next. Right. And so how do I go from there? Mm -hmm. And what... Um, yeah, and what does that, that look like? Yeah. That's so we don't get stuck. Right. And so it's just pulling on it's just pulling on Christ. Um, even when we talk about so I can go let's just probably process and go down the list. Okay. So for instance, like rejection. Mm -hmm. Um, rejection is a form of denial, so it produces like a loss of something like mm -hmm. you wanted to gain something that you didn't gain because of the rejection that took place and so what happens is if we become in a place where we hold on to the rejection instead of getting to a place where we have realized that that rejection was released in my life to allow me to know what rejection is mm -hmm. and to be able to help someone go through rejection then it changed my mind to say, okay, let me take this and let me apply it to the area of my life where it should. Yes. Does that make sense? It does. So I know I want to say it's always easier said than done, but it's possible to, possible to be done. You can do it if you allow Christ to come in and heal you of understanding the healing of the mind. So the mind needs healing so that we take away the the voices. Yes. And um, I think one of the hardest 
is when we're rejected by a parent or a family member mm -hmm. um, to that point where that's someone who is like really close. Like, you know what I mean? Right. And then a lot of times too, we can't get away from. Right. Because they are part you of know, our family. You know, the, the, the scripture comes to mind. I can't think of exactly where it's at, but it's, um, it's in my mind about the Lord said, your father and your mother, your parents, they say your mother will reject you. But I, God, has chosen you. Mm -hmm. So they didn't have a choice who they had. Mm -hmm. But I had a choice to choose you. Mm -hmm. And so for that reason, I will hold on more to the word told me that I could possibly be rejected by those ones that released me out here. Nevertheless, God chose me and I'm adopted into this royal priesthood. Mm -hmm. So for that reason, I can't hold on to the fact that you drop the ball. What I can do is give you grace because I understand you're dropping the ball. It's produced through some hurt that you have been hurt because we want stuff out of people that they don't have. Mm. And so if you had wholeness in you, you would never reject me. But because you're broken, you're taking that brokenness and try to be whole, but it spilled. And mm. I'm the victim that it mm. spilled on. But nevertheless, my God, yes. <laughs> nevertheless, we have a God that say, I'm the fixer, picker upper. <laughs> I take you in and I yes. mold you and I make you because that's the thing about life we want stuff out of people that they don't have to mm -hmm. give us and we fault them because they yes. tried to give us something they never possessed yes if they yes. never been hold it's nothing they can give me right. but what they have they can choose to push for greatness but what if they didn't know how to do that what if you're the key to their push So take the focus off of me uh -huh. and don't expect, because, you know, I, and what I realized, too, a lot of times we expect people to treat us either how we want to be treated or how we would treat them, but they are not us. They are not us. And like you said, they don't have that capacity to give, but yet we still want it. You say, I say, Sonia, I'm going to give you a million dollars today. And you turn around and say, okay, well, just just give me 10000 Why are you asking already? Because <laughs> you, you positioned yourself that you had something to give me that mm -hmm. you lied. Mm -hmm. You really don't have it, right? Right. So I get mad at you and reject you and push you away because I don't want you to come and ask for that that I just lied about. Mm -hmm. So when you do ask, you get more of my brokenness mm -hmm. then here's the money that you are asking for because i have it mm -hmm. and i use that analogy because that's what happens in the hearts mm -hmm. you know i understand what i'm saying i want you to love me a certain way yes. when you never understood that level of love so i'm desiring something you don't have mm -hmm. we get in relationships and we promise things that we never have so what happened? The seeds become broken. Everything becomes broken from that tree. Yes. Why? Because I tried to do something that I never had the ability to do. Mm -hmm. So we find grace in that. We learn how to love through that. And, and, and we take our situations and we give them back to God and say, you do what you have desired to do with that. And so that's why I love the story of Joseph. Because Joseph had brothers who didn't understand that Joseph was born. He was a favorite child because, first off, Jacob desired Rachel. Mm -hmm. He didn't never want Leah. 
And some of them came from Leah. Let's just be real. Come on. Because <laughs> we think that fathers did not churn yes. from certain women. And we yes. think that that's new. That ain't new. That thing is from the Bible. He had all them churn, but when Joseph came from Rachel, that was a whole nother love there. Because he came from the woman I desire. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Is it right? No, no man shouldn't be sleeping around having all these churn. But sometimes it happens when he get in covenant with that one that his heart desires. Yes. What do we do? We grow from it. And so I love the story of Joseph because Joseph was that chosen child. And that's why sibling robbery was on the loose. And they hated him and they were jealous of him because he already was loved by daddy. Daddy gave him things. He gave him a coat of many colors. Mm -hmm. They didn't give us no coat. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. And so what happens in that story to sum it up is the brothers take him and sell him. And once he was sold, he was going through every child and season, having to learn how to be in positions and to still be who God called him to be. And he did that. He did that. And then at the end, when he was faced with his brothers who sold him, who needed him. Mm -hmm. Now they was in a position where they needed some help. Because Joseph had they came up with a plan to know how to survive when the land was in lack, right? Okay, so everybody had to come over there to get because they were stored up. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody better preserve today. I hear that in my spirit. You better learn how to preserve. You better learn how to take your dreams and allow them to help you to come through yes. because there's going to be a time when we're in a land of lack. I hear God on this, so I'm going to share it. We're going to be in a land of lack, and you're going to have to have what you have already stored up. And if you don't have nothing stored up, you will don't have anything and so for that reason when they needed they came to him mm -hmm. and what happened he had to face who sold him and he weeped but he grew mm -hmm. he weeped but he grew and before you know it Joseph ain't just take care of his brothers he took care of their wives and their children mm -hmm. but he took out a whole family he went, he had favor with the king to say, can they come over here where we at? Because they didn't even belong in that land. That's right. Okay. He had favor with the outsiders. And he said, can they come over here? And the king said they can. Mm -hmm. You go read the story. Because it's going to bless you to know that your struggles are for your purpose. It was never designed to take you out. It was only designed that you would elevate and overcome. That's good. Yeah, that's that's good stuff right there. Yes. I tell the Lord thank you. Mm. Amen. Amen. Well, from the pit to the palace. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> from the pit to the palace. Listen, I encourage you. Whatever loss it may have been, whatever situation you may have faced, face today, I encourage you to, God wants just a little bit of your faith to say that this is what they're saying about you. And because they're saying it about you and I believe who you are, I'm going to have faith to trust you that you're going to carry me through this season. So may it be grief. You may have lost a loved one. You may have lost a parent. You may have lost a child, cousin, brother, sister, whatever it may be. Because I understand that grieving is real. And so even in that type of loss, because we talked about rejection, but even in grieving the loss of loved ones, and you don't understand that at this moment, I encourage you to put your trust and your faith in God. And if you just give him a little bit of it, he'll take it and multiply it and bring you to a place where revelation will help you get to your next. Listen, I pray that you will trust in the Lord and you will lean not to your own understanding and he will direct your path. I love you all. We will pray. And so, Lord, we just thank you. Lord, we thank you for revelation. We thank you for your favor. And God, we're actually thankful for our struggles. 
because some of us wanted to give up and some of us wanted to throw in the towel. But we understood that we were better after we realized that you stood up inside of us. And God, we thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you for giving us Jesus to yes. be the ultimate example, yes. to show us how we are to overcome. God, bless those who are listening today. God, ignite the fire in their bellies that they will be stirred up. And that everything that you put put in them would come out for this season and for this time. Yes. God, I just tell you, thank you. I tell you, thank you for this opportunity to love on your children. And I tell you, thank you for this opportunity to be a voice in this season. For it is in your son, Yeshua, we pray. Amen and amen.